Hey everybody, it's me, it's your old buddy, Steve Simonson, and I'm coming back with another episode of the Awesomers.com podcast series. This now extended series, a long-running series, uh, this is episode number 169, everybody. So all you have to do is go to awesomers.com slash 169, and you're going to find show notes, details. Uh, sometimes I throw in a link or two, and occasionally my team gets involved, and they actually do some real work. Uh, that, that adds value. But go to awesomers.com slash 169 to get all of the exciting details and show notes about today. And you're going to want to do that because I've got my very good friend and a partner, uh, it's Paul Harvey with me. Paul, say hello. Hey, Steve. How are you doing? I'm very well indeed. And Paul is joining me all the way from South Africa. And we're, we're actually have a running bet on whose internet's going to crap out <laughs> first. Uh, Paul, what do you think? I, I mean, I got, I got at least like $10 on me because I know how shaky it is. Yeah, but there's Zimbabwe dollars, so it's not a bet I'm willing to take. <laughs> uh, the reality is my one gigabit fiber optic nonsense uh, is cutting out routinely these days. And let me just uh, give a plug to uh, Wave Broadband. They suck. Uh, so <laughs> there you go. Uh, Paul, uh, for those who don't know Paul Harvey, he's been uh, well-received on many podcasts, uh, seller sessions. He's a speaker uh, internationally as well. I think, Paul, you also have your own podcast going now, don't you? Yeah, I do. We do have our Slow Chatbot podcast. We do. It's great because what, that focuses purely on social media strategies for Amazon. So there's something which I feel is really needed. And yeah, we're rolling out more in the next couple of months. Uh, there was a bit of issues with iTunes, so it wasn't working there, but now it is. So yeah, so expect the next few months. Some cool stuff coming in iTunes is a lot like Amazon for those podcasters out there. Uh, if you get on the naughty list, then you're in trouble and, uh, oh, yeah. and you don't know why and nobody ever tells you. And uh, yeah, that's life. But uh, well, I think, you know, it's definitely something that's needed is focus on social focus on messenger bots and, and demystifying that whole genre, if you will. So uh, as I mentioned, just full disclosure, I'm an investor in Paul uh, and Anthony's company, sellerchatbot.com. And they have created their own platform for making messenger bots simple to use. So a lot of people hear messenger bot and they think I got to get out the computer programming manual and, you know, get out my geek uh, glasses and, and uh, really go to town. But Paul, is that how messenger bots really work? Do you need to be a programmer to make them work? Well, the funny thing is, right, literally, this is, a, this is a true story. In December, I was spent time with my friend, an uh, old high school buddy. I spent a weekend at his house, and the guy was doing Facebook ads, but now he was for a, a shutters company. And what I showed him, it, this is literally his business, is that he would cr create a nice ad and purely just post it on Facebook Marketplace. That was his business. That was his marketing. And he, was, he would make one sale, and one sale was quite a big sale. So um, that's what he would do. But basically, it was just, that was his strategy. Um, I then showed him how to use chatbots. And when I first showed him, I, I showed him like a, a screenshot from many chats and some other big platforms. And he's like, yeah, Paul, that's great. I can't do that. And when he sees the programming level, like what you need, it's, it's, it's so overwhelming. But then after a while, staying with him, after a weekend, he was sorted. And now his business is running chatbots for multiple businesses, not even that shutter company, multiple businesses because it's running chatbots. And now he simply brings in leads for customers by using chatbots. And chatbots can now relate not only to um, um, personal services, can relate to e-commerce. There's not a brand out there that cannot use a chatbot. Well, that's the, the thing that I find so exciting. Uh, you know, in particular, once you kind of get over the mental block, it, particularly using the seller chatbot, it's very, very simple. In fact, as I recall, because uh, I've used the, uh, the platform from time to time, uh, for example, we made the Kevin and Steve bot. So anybody who wants to check out a bot flow can go to kevinandsteve.com uh, or maybe you've got to find us on Facebook and find the bot flow because we're not really doing a lot of advertising or any advertising. But you can see how the bot interacts. And empowery.com, same, you can go on Facebook and, and check out those flows. They're all hosted in seller chatbot. And they, they kind of create a, a unique customer experience. And you guys, I use the flows that were mostly built into mm -hmm. the thing that come with the, the platform. How does that work? Uh, what was your vision? Pretty much how it works is when we started using chatbots back in the day, when we were, I, I really believe we were some of the first Amazon sellers to use chatbots because um, no one was doing it. It was great. But that required a two-year learning gap which no one can do. So then we create the chatbot, easy, done for you solutions, in the sense that, let's say you want to um, get some reviews when you launch a product and get some reviews when you're gonna launch it maybe 10% off. And anyone that took the offer 
would love a good, uh, you ask for a review. So we have a flow for that. All you do is simply change the images to your product, change the branding to your product, that's it. In the space of 10 minutes, you are good. And that's nice because no more wasting time going back and forth and to small little issues in the past, especially chatbots. I mean, maybe there was a box wasn't checked or maybe a flow wasn't connected, painful things like that that we were wasting our time on and we shouldn't be doing that. And these, these flows are pretty basic things. Ultimately, if you can copy and paste, you can be in the, the chatbot business. And better yet, I don't want you, the entrepreneur, listening to do it. I want your team to do it. I want you to delegate. And it really is not that hard. In fact, Paul's got a bunch of training baked into the, the platform where you can watch the training. If I'm not mistaken, Paul, isn't that training free as part of the, the service? Mm. Exactly, exactly that. So all the training is there, and it's funny you mentioned about the VA aspect because we have a uh, we have a we have, we have good customer list, but we talk more to VAs than we do to the entrepreneurs because the the VAs come on board, they get it, and they do it, and then if we show them other platforms, they know what they're doing. They come to us within a day or a few hours, playing around, they know what they're doing. Yeah, that's that's really you know we talk about leverage often on the awesomers.com podcast, right? What are the points of leverage you can get in your business? to scale, to grow without killing yourself, without stressing yourself out um, it, any more than necessary, right? We're all gonna have stress, mm. we're in that business of solving problems, but the fact that VAs can watch the training, can engage with these pre-made templates and then copy and paste and then you're up and running, mm. that is really great stuff. And that's one of the reasons why they won uh, me as an investor and, and I certainly am a big fan. Um, and I, I love the principle of how do we take something that is at least perceived to be complex and simplify it and make it kind of accessible to everyone. And I think you guys have done a good job. So uh, let me ask you this, Paul, as mm. you know, as people want more, um, I, I don't know, let's say complicated things. Is it, if I'm not mistaken, you guys have brought out more advanced templates that you offer mm. for sale mm. from time to time. Tell me, how, tell me about that a little bit. So let's consider this, right? The average Amazon said that they will send, um, maybe do some rebate flows uh, to, the, to, the, to the product and it'll work. It will work. But then as soon as they stop, keyword drops. And that's a big problem because when we should, uh, the, the proper way of doing things is properly, sorry, the proper way of doing things is that to send as many ranking signals as possible. That means time on page. That means people looking at your reviews, people looking at your images. So what we do over there, we have something called the evergreen flow. The evergreen flow pretty much ah, uses a whole bunch of gamification where someone comes through the flow, maybe they'll get a discount, maybe they'll get a rebate, maybe they'll be asked to check out um, and do a scavenger hunt on the page, hence increasing the time on page, and then make the offer. Or maybe there'll be, be some um, shopping cart abandonment, maybe someone adds a cart, then use it. We then come back to them and say, you know what, you don't get it, so why not uh, we help you with the process. So the evergreen flow is pretty much where it says evergreens, you just pour traffic into it, it does the rest. It hits on all the ranking factors. So the, the evergreen flow, I talk about it too much because it's my favorite flow. But well, alongside let, let that, me jump we, in because I think that's sure. a big important one. Too often we get on what I often refer to as a treadmill. It's a marketing mm -hmm. treadmill. Hey, we got to get a promotion done this week. Our sales are a little softer. We need this or we got too much inventory. And we jump on the treadmill and we run as fast as we can. Mm -hmm. And then the next week we need some other treadmill to, to happen because we have yeah. stopped. And the point of the evergreen, which I think is brilliant, is to say, no, what if we had a systemic way of engaging mm. an audience, building a brand that worked over the long haul? And that is, yeah. again, very few uh, uh, people have I heard talk about that, let alone implement it. And your evergreen flow, I, I know that people are uh, uh, lapping it up. They really love it. I definitely would tell you if you're a seller chatbot customer or not, Go find that evergreen flow because that is a pretty much, in my view, a way of checking off a really important marketing tick box because you can mm -hmm. always have, at whatever budget you want, you can run that evergreen flow at all times. Is that right, Paul? Have I got it right? 100%. You just keep it going and you put in your criteria, your restrictions, meaning that no one can spend more than once a day. No one can go through the flow more than once a day and then constantly pick it up and then it's retargeted alongside that. However, though, the one big thing about this, consider this evergreen flow. If you run it every day, run an ad, maybe $10 a day, you'll get between 10 and 20 people a day. Now, a month, that's uh, anywhere from a, a 300 to 600 a month. Not bad, but keep that going for a few months and you have a potent list. And that's huge, though, because what people don't understand is a list is great, but a list can be used not just for Amazon. 
granted the list came from Amazon, so maybe maybe only then they will take the offer from Amazon. But if you are getting a really good offer on your own Shopify store, that's a big offer. So essentially, what people should be doing, building up the messenger lists to make the bridge off of Amazon. I think right now that is the best way going forward. Well, I love this because you know, Amazon would have you believe that they own everything, all things e-commerce, they mm. own all the customers. They, but the reality is we're talking about generating through marketing. Facebook or, uh, happens to be this particular thing, but it's external marketing. We generate the, the lead. We happen to send it to the Amazon sales channel. That's our discretion. We can do that mm. because of various reasons, uh, including wanting to support that channel, knowing that Amazon converts better than a, a traditional channel, even our own Shopify stores but we can divert that stuff at any point. And, and there are times, for example, maybe you wanna get some ranking on Walmart or eBay. These are good times to consider how you will fork that traffic, mm. assuming that you've hit your Amazon goal. So I love the idea that you can point a message about anywhere you want. You wanna send it to Walmart, you wanna send it to your own website, send it wherever makes the most sense for your business. That's the power of a brand building awareness. Mm. And something which people don't realize as well is that Facebook have been very slow to fix up, fix up, fix up their payments portal on Messenger. It's there, but it doesn't work very well. It's clunky. When Facebook fixes that, then right now Facebook has four times the user base that Amazon does. That means essentially at that point, if there's a payment portal there, people are using WhatsApp, they're using Messenger, they're using Instagram, they'll all be siphoned into Messenger and people can run payments, you can order products. The next business will be offer, offering, offering up fulfillment services for Messenger orders. And that'll be the next big thing. And then there will be software that helps you amalgamate your FBA inventory and then along with the Facebook stuff. It's going to be huge. And that's why the winners there will be the ones that are, that are starting now and building a huge, huge messenger list. Well, again, I, I love building anything that has equity. And, and those things are assets, right? So you build a email list. You build a, a bot subscriber list. You build you know, your customer base, whatever you're building, all of that has equity and that has value because they're assets long term. Uh, too often we think about, I just need that sale today, right? I need to place mm. inventory tomorrow. I got to make enough sales to get enough cash. And so we, we think short term too often. Uh, I think many of us entrepreneurs and particularly Amazon sellers where we're kind of stuck in our, our own little echo chamber. But I'm uh, appreciating the fact that you help people fly above that level mm. and talk about the big picture, which is, by the way, Paul inferred this, but I want to call it out plainly. The more you advertise to that list, that retargeting has value, and also the mm. cost of your acquisition per customer goes down because Facebook gets to know your audience better yes. and can match up who's going to respond better. Is that true, right, Paul? 100%. The more you do it, and one thing I say to everyone, if you're starting with Messenger, take a few a few hundred dollars maybe, just and just the, your aim is to blow it. Spend as fast as you can on Messenger ads and figure out what works and what doesn't work. You'd be surprised at the number of people that don't want to do that. And um, the ones that do are the ones that learn a lot. So people, I say go there, spend the money, figure out what works for you, and then you know you have a game plan. And just have a budget. People need to incorporate the Amazon PPC Everyone has a budget for Amazon PPC, but no one has a budget for external traffic. Um, they have to now. They really do. Yeah, it's, uh, I, I've said one of my axioms is you can't have a world-class brand in a single channel. Uh, I think that's largely true. There's a little asterisk that says world-class doesn't mean it's not a value. Yes, you can have a single channel brand that builds value and equity. But really, you know, can you imagine uh, Apple just selling in one channel? And I, I know that's a, a big brand, but, uh, you know, Nike, pick, mm. pick your big brand. If I name a small brand, you don't know. The, the analogy is useless. But the point is multi-channel. People shop where they want to shop. And to Paul's point, if, if and when, it's, it's not really a matter of if, it's when, Facebook gets their act together on the payment piece of the puzzle, you can pitch the product. You can pitch the offer right in Messenger consummate the transaction right there and then move to fulfillment, whether it's through Amazon or some other fulfillment center and software like, uh, you know, channel advisor or the one that I, uh, am invested in parsimony.com. These are going to be ways of catching multi-channel orders and fulfilling those and sending them mm. through ShipStation or to three PLs or wherever you want to send them. So that's a big fat, hairy deal. They will be a competitor to Amazon five years from now. Mm the landscape will look different. It will not be Amazon 
and only Amazon, which is how it feels today. Do you agree with that general uh, assessment? 100%. And I, I really feel that Messenger will be a big factor as a disruptor in that market. It really will be. is because now, um, again, so why do you think Amazon said, okay, now we can't do um, custom matching on Facebook with the audiences because people are doing that. And Facebook is tired of us taking that data and using it to actually build our own list. Even if, this annoys me, even if I obtain a customer and send them to Amazon, Amazon now says it's their customer. Like, no, I paid for that customer. It should be mine. But Amazon has rules about that. Yeah, so I, I definitely can say that, you know, Amazon, if they make a transaction, they don't want us doing all the matching and all the, the uh, things that were happening, a data pens and so forth. And, you know, I, I get it because they're saying we want the customer to come and buy from us. But the reality is when we have them on our bot list, we can pivot whenever we want. Mm. It's, you know, maybe the next offer is not on Amazon. Maybe it's on our Shopify or Walmart or mm. eBay or, you know, pick your favorite channel. There's lots of reasons to, to pivot to channels. It could be the Facebook marketplace or the Google market mm. uh, place. I forget what they call the newest version. Um, but those customers on our list are still ours. Amazon mm, exactly. can say whatever they want, but when they, when they touch us first, that's our customer and yeah. we have the right to uh, pursue that. So let's talk about um, the, the ranking signals. You, you talked about it just briefly before about time on page and things like that, but give me some of the things that help Amazon sellers rank their product. And th this, I think, applies universally to Walmart and other channels too, but let's use Amazon because they're the big dog. What, what helps a page or a product, I should say, rank? So right now, what I'm seeing a lot, so first of all, I'm pretty cheap, but rebates work incredibly well. They are. And the thing is, I, I really do, at this point in the game, it'll be anyone, you'll be foolish not to use rebates. They are expensive, but they are effective. And I've actually had case studies where I've matched up people that were aggressive and used rebates as opposed to those that weren't. The ones that were aggressive are now sitting pretty. The ones that weren't are still trying to relaunch, relaunch, relaunch. So first of all, rebates. The next thing, a big factor is add to cart. And after that, it's going to be time on page. And after that, there's a whole bunch of just time on page and other look at your images. Really, that, that's a big deal. So you don't want to send traffic that, that purely like a two-step URL that goes to the product and buys it because Amazon says, wait a minute, this guy clicked up a link which is not publicly available. How did they get that? They do that and then they buy the product within three, four seconds. So there's no times on the page. It's, the, it's, it's, not, it's not proper organic traffic. So what everyone should do is, run search find bar to the product because that's authentic, authentic organic traffic or organic appears in Amazon's eyes. But that, so that's the first part, do rebates with that. Second part, add in some shopping cart abandonment. That means get people to add your product to cart and then that helps ranking as well. And secondly, how much time do they spend on the page? And um, again, that, that's a factor. I don't know how long, where is the best time? I actually have no idea. But I have my customers play around there for like 10 seconds. I make them do a little scavenger hunt. What did Bob's review? What color product did he get? Things like that. And then they, they answer the question, they want a rebate, they want a discount, whichever. But all these factors really, really work together. And it's not just one factor. We then, if you're targeting a keyword, let's say baby blankets, you make sure when you're running PPC, you're bidding on baby blankets because if you are and someone clicks on it yes you're paying for that but you need that data because it's an extra ranking factor so all these factors kind of amalgamate and form one big launch and it works incredibly well and you stick with this launch so when you launch you're stuck there as opposed to launch and then drop afterwards yeah i think those are all very salient points and it's so important for everybody to understand when when Amazon really deals with machine learning to, to drive all this decision making. So everything, it's not one single algorithm. It's mm. hundreds of algorithms kind of meshed together. And those machine learning take all these signals and they kind of add, you know, more and more, um, you know, if you think of it like a, a bar chart, it adds more and more relevancy and more and more certainty that your listing is going to get visibility. Mm. Um, if, if those signals stop, then the machine learning decides, oh, well, heck, uh, you know, no more external traffic or no more add to carts or no more full price sales, whatever that mm. the case is. Things that don't work now are the old strategy of giving 100% coupons uh, away. Mm. Is that fair to say? Yeah, I mean, I've tested it. I really have. And I've tested it by purposely and accidentally letting a coupon code go viral. 
and I've tested it both ways, and yeah, it never works. It really doesn't. And it's, it's, and the thing is, to be honest, to be fair, it does work in a way by brute force, meaning you just have so much stock and you just give it all the way. That way you can, but it's not. As, but it's it's just it's it's not gonna work work well for you because you give away whole stock, you gotta reorder again. It doesn't work out. Well, and even if those, even if it does work, which I don't think it does work that well, although you're right that ultimately brute force will tip that machine learning over. Mm. Uh, it, it just costs too much. And worse is if you happen to get a review from one of those people you highly discounted, mm. the review is not going to stick, right? Mm. Whether it's unverified exactly. or whether it shows up or uh, any of that. So you got a lot of secondary issues and Amazon's going, why in the world would we incentivize you to, you know, give a bunch of stuff away? And mm. so this is where the advent, and there are companies out there who offer these rebate concepts I'll call them platforms, right? They're marketing platforms mm. and they say, Hey, you can do a rebate, a full price rebate, a half price rebate, whatever you want. Uh, but what I've found is some of those are facing challenges where big sophisticated buyers come in and aggregate and take up all the rebates. Yeah. And then they sell against exactly. you on your own damn listing, which is mm. a terrible mm. outcome, right? And now they're running a course to do that. Yeah. Like they, they paid for a course. Yeah. It's, it's, it's so, it's, it's really bad. Yeah. So just to be clear, the, they, somebody selling a course to teach consumers how to go buy product essentially for free and then sell it against the listing that now ranks really well, right? That's a terrible <laughs> outcome. Uh, so they, I hate the, that as a reality and I won't deal with that, those types of platforms and situations, but let's talk about your super secret in beta program called Rankster mm -hmm. that I describe as a done for you system, but how would you describe it? So yeah, pretty much it is done for you. But the thing is though, is that with Rankster, so we had beta and went very well. We did have some ups and downs, but uh, we, we knew that as beta, so it's why it's beta. So we're over that now and we have some really good results. The problem with Rankster, right? And that when we started doing it, I think um, a, a bunch of people said, ooh, it's not gonna work because I know I'm a control freak. So if I hire a rebate service, um, I don't want a, a so I don't want like um, an automated service with platforms and bots doing for me. I want to know there's someone doing that. Like I prefer someone hand picking, looking at the listing, looking at the bot stuff, doing everything. So that's what Rankster is. We've actually hired now. I think we're up to about five, six staff that purely manage Rankster in terms of um, onboarding your customers, regarding the rebates, everything. What we do is basically you sign up, you say, I want to do 100 units of this product. We say, great. And then we do the rest. We actually then run um, Facebook ads that bring people into a bot flow. We get the bot flow and get the rebate from them. That way we can actually observe the people and see, is this person a good or a bad person? Is it a fake profile? That's the first thing. It's a fake, fake profile. When they submit the order ID, are they doing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and nine? And that happens. It really does. So we can check all these things. It's nice because now it's a more of a, um, a manual process, which is crazy because we have so many rebates coming up. But manual always wins over automated. And I would never automate anything. And that's why we have this process. It's great because we are running Facebook ads. We are doing absolutely everything. You just sit back. This is a, a crazy concept to me. Uh, so I, I love this because it really, it puts the alignment of interest with, uh, you know, the seller chatbot rankster program mm -hmm. and the entrepreneur. So first of all, there's, there are some of these rebate services that have kind of existing gangs of people that they say, Hey, go do this, uh, buy this product and, and here's your rebate. And, uh, and there's some that are actually trustworthy and some that I wouldn't touch with a 10 foot pole. Mm. So uh, good luck figuring out the difference if you're just an entrepreneur uh, floating in the world. I will tell you that Empowery has vetted resources you can trust. So if you need somebody, uh, you can find them through Empowery. But the point I'm making is instead of just kind of having the same gang that is clearly got like nuclear footprints walking through Amazon, getting all these rebates over and mm -hmm. over, you guys take a totally different approach and you say, hey, brand, I will advertise your product. On Facebook, you'll create the ad, you'll run the ad, including the risk of the ad for yeah. one set price. And that yeah. puts an extraordinary amount of pressure on you. And I have to say, <laughs> it's, it really is a, a, a magical thing to behold because all the benefits of building a brand, building a list, and having all of that work done for you is like a dream for an entrepreneur. 
Pretty much. And that's what I like about it is that um, I, I really feel that in any entrepreneur's business, there's two problems they have. They don't have cash flow and they don't have time. If they have cash flow, they won't have time. If they have time, they won't have cash flow. And that, that that's what Rankster is pretty much, is that it's giving the time back to you. Don't worry about stressing about which keyword to rank for, um, how many givers to do. Just give that to us. We handle all that stuff. Because, yeah, like I'm, I think it's about focusing on your strengths. My strengths is about launching products. That's why I excel in. Um, so that's really what everyone needs to do. Take advantage of this because um, it's a really good service and it works well. And it's nice because you know you get guys like me, I'm a data freak, looking over your ads. Um, I think not a single ad goes by without me observing it and the rest of the team working on it. And they, they, they've been told off a number of times. They know how to create a good Facebook ad, good structure, everything. Yeah, it's, again, if I just break it down for the, you know, the customers out there listening, you know, what if you could go to a place and pay them a set fee and then get this suite of services? The suite begins with, Hey, we will generate X number of, you know, rebate customers for you. You want a hundred fine. You want 200 fine. You want 500 fine over some period of time. And by the way, we're going to talk in a minute about how ranking takes a little longer than it used to, to mm. show up. Uh, and I, again, this is not just an Amazon thing. This can work on any platform. But they come up and they say, hey, we want 100 rebates over the next couple of weeks. And then you guys will go through and you'll vet the product. And by vet, I mean, you decide if you're going to accept it or not. Because hmm. not all products should be accepted. Is that right? Oh, yes. Definitely. I mean, there, there was someone that went, they wanted me to sell, I wanted us to sell a gun oil. I was like, I would love to sell gun oil, but now I have to use images of guns. And I know Facebook would shut down our accounts in a matter of seconds if we did that. So there, there, there is a line. Like, and we, and we, we try to do as many products as possible. But some products just don't, you can't really advertise on Facebook or Instagram because they're, they're, not, they're not, 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 not a good suit. Yeah, so that, that point, you got to first vet it. Then they got to mm. make sure that the listing is worth a darn, right? So now mm. the product mm. is sellable, but if the listing sucks, it's not going to work anyway, so why bother, right? Mm. Uh, and that's, I think, reasonable. The, the seller says, hey, I want to rank for these keywords, and so they help execute the Facebook ads, the search find buy flows, all the messenger bot stuff happens in the background, and that list that's being built is fresh and it's unique, and it's not the same people over and over that have that mm. toxic nuclear waste trail behind them at Amazon. It's real customers that you're generating real awareness and real sales and transactions on Amazon. And I think that is phenomenal. Uh, how do, you know, you've been doing this in, in beta for a while. Uh, how's it, how's it been going? It's been going really, really well. So in the beginning, literally is that, um, the only people more, for, more, uh, less forgiving than Amazon support is Facebook support. Because what happened literally is, uh, I must be aware of this, but basically we had some pages shut down, which is absolutely fine. The first time in my, in my whole career on, Facebook, on Amazon or Facebook ads or ever, ever had a page shut down, it was weird. And, when, and the thing is, end of the day, is because we have block rate. Block rate was too high on a given day, anything above 4%, which is crazy because on that day, I think we only ran like, I think about 30 ads or 30 conversations. So that means like maybe about, maybe about um, three people blocked it, which means higher than 4%. But anyway, so the first issue there went really well, but rocky start because Facebook shut down, shut down the pages. And again, this is, a pro this is a problem that we take on board. Most Amazon sellers never have to worry about this. And a lot of the times when people scale their ads, they get shut down by, by Facebook, lose their ad account, lose their page. We take all the risk for that. And then, <laughs> this is, let me just jump in, Paul. This is <laughs> like not just done for you, Facebook ads, rebates, and, and marketing mm. and ranking and so forth. It's done for you stress. Paul is doing the stressing yeah. for you. <laughs> yeah, I, I really am. Seriously. That was a lot of stress, I know. But, but all of that recovered and then mm. uh, ads are running. And, and uh, I know that I saw some reports the other day where there's an insane amount of people being added to these, these lists. And the fact mm. that the uh, and again, I'm not saying what your final offer is going to be, but as of right now, my understanding is the people in the beta, they get that list. Is that yeah. true? Yeah. That, Pretty oh, much. So. Mind blown, right? Nobody, nobody builds a list for you and mm. then gives you the list for uh, what I think is an extraordinarily value rate. So Not even that. You get the, the customer name, the order ID, the email address, and even their Facebook profile. So, and that's huge. That's great for retargeting, boarding up the email list. There's so much you can do with that. I mean, you now know who took rebates. So you now know who to talk to and chat to to get reviews from those people. If you want to go down that route. 
Yeah. So yeah, I, again, powerful stuff. Now, uh, as an investor, at some point, I'm going to tell Paul, raise the price, charge for every one of these things. Uh, but in, during his beta and uh, phase, that I know guys are getting a heck of a, a bargain. Mm. And Paul, if I'm not mistaken, you're about to open up the second round of beta yes. in your future. Is that true? Pretty much. So pretty much from, um, in the next few days, I will be announcing the webinar where we'll be announcing the next onboarding process for the next few people. Yeah. That's gonna be okay. Huge. So by the time this airs, by the time we release this podcast, if you go to sellerchatbot.com, you should be able to find somewhere yes. that gets you on that webinar link. Is that true? Right there. Literally is on the page. Um, if, you, if you go to sellerchatbot.com forward slash rankster, R-A-N-K-S-T-E-R, do that. Um, you go there or just go to the homepage and there'll be links there. Either or. I like the name Rankster because it reminds me of Napster and all the music that uh, I downloaded. <laughs> uh, so so this, this idea of Rankster, again, done for you, which I think is powerful, and you get assets at the end, right? So it's not like here's right. my money and it disappears. It's like here's my money and I get these awareness benefits, possible ranking benefits. That's mm. up to the algorithms of the platform du jour. Uh, but you also get lists built, and mm. that is unprecedented. Nobody else does that. And uh, again, and just I, one more thing, Steve. I just want to, one more thing I want to add is that because we're doing so many ranking flows, ranking strategies, we are testing everything. So if you say, listen, I want to talk about this keyword, we say, no, trust us. We know that's not the best keyword because we now have strategies. For example, um, two step URLs for us just don't work. And I'm not basing this on, on people's opinion, I'm basing it on actual data we have. So all the when someone comes on board, we say to them, okay, you want to do that? But we would recommend this. For example, right now we are seeing around two weeks for ranking, to, ranking, changes, ranking changes to hold. And, that, and that's very different because people are saying, okay, I can rank a product in three, four days using search fund buying rebates. Everyone that said to me can't, can't back it up. They really, really can't. And that's huge because if you're showing me a helium 10 graph, that's great. But that's one point. There's still, if you use AMZ Jet, that's the other tool, where so statewide rankings, that, that gives more data. So again, keyword data might not be the best KPI. Yeah, it's a, th this is a, the problem, I suppose, for Amazon sellers. You mm. can't be an expert in everything. And mm. there are so many data points. There are so many aspects to this data that when you run you know, one single data point, you don't actually know if that's the full picture. And I think, exactly. you know, I, I definitely respect the fact that you take these numbers so seriously and that you're actually so good at it. Uh, I still can't believe how effective your Facebook marketing is. It really is something <laughs> to behold. And, and again, I love it. The fact that you and Anthony said, we're going to put our money where our mouth is, right? We think this is cool. We know that bots are kind of a key linchpin to this whole thing that the seller chat, uh, chat bot is what this whole thing runs on. And then you're like, we'll put our money at stake. We're going to deliver mm -hmm. this number of rebates and we'll spend until we get that number, which yes. I find to be uh, phenomenal. And <laughs> I, I tell you, if anybody is looking you know, for a launch, uh, do, do you think this will work on relaunches too or just new launches? What's your 100%. Um, in my, my, my most recent launch, um, in the, in the, in the pre-beta, which kind of makes comes out there, I launched two products. One was a year old with horrible sales history. I'd been hijacked out of stock. It was a horrible year of sales. And then I launched alongside it um, a new product and it was a boy's version of that of that girl's version's toy. So a boy and girl's version, and I ranked them. One was brand new, one was old and really bad sales history. They both got to numbers one and two for their respective keywords. It's the same keywords. So um, in my opinion, rebates done properly can negate a poor sales history. Just bear in mind is that now we're seeing longer periods of time to rank. So no longer can you do like a three, four day blast. That won't work. It's gonna to have to be stretched out, stretch out to at least two weeks. Yeah, but this is where when you do a full priced buy, mm -hmm. um, you know, even if you're doing a 100% rebate or 50% rebate, whatever it is, but they're making full price buys, you need less of those than, you know, you go to some of the platforms, and you're like, hey, I need to rank on this keyword. And they're like, hey, you need to give away a thousand units. Exactly. That's not the case with a full price buy. So you can do fewer of them over a longer period of time. Mm -hmm. But again, I think relevancy matters and the competitiveness of the keyword matters at the end yes. of the day. That's never going to change. So people who say, well, I just want to do 10 giveaways and be ranked number one and get rich. Good luck to you, right? That's, that's probably not going to work on any, yeah. any solution. 
Um, it's got to be custom tailored to meet the individual requirements. But uh, Paul, I, I'm excited about Rankster because I think, I mean, I have some products that I, I want to use and mm -hmm. I've been talking to people the last few days. I'm like, man, if you can get into Paul's beta, you are a lucky, uh, lucky person. So uh, I hope that they Appreciate get in. That. But tell me um, again, wh where should we go to find out more? So um, first of all, just go to Sled Chatbot. If you go to the website, sledchatbot.com, you find it there. And if you want to go direct to, directly to the site, it will be sledchatbot.com forward slash rankster. Yeah. So uh, check that out. Let's get with the program. Uh, in the meantime, if you don't already have a bot platform, I suppose you could grab that straight away. And uh, I don't know how they get the evergreen flow or anything, but I, I suppose that there's answers in there somewhere. Mm. You know, we have to take very actionable steps, especially at this time of year, to make a difference in our business. Uh, now, there's plenty of other things that are happening in business that we need to be cautious about and we need to be mindful of. But this is one in marketing where we've got to take action and we've got to move fast and learn fast, even if that means failing fast. Uh, so I encourage people to take action today. Paul, any uh, words of wisdom before we tie this thing off? Pretty much, I've been saying this for the past two, three years, the best time to start anything in Messenger is right now. Um, when I first started Messenger, I can get a lead, quality leads, not like giveaway leads, not like a... Uh, uh, junk leads, real leads I can get for anywhere from about 30 to 40 cents quality leads. Now, for the same quality lead, it could be anywhere from two to three dollars, not done properly. So, again, the longer people wait, same as Amazon ads, the longer people wait, the more expensive it will get. Yeah, I, I think that's really, again, sage wisdom. Uh, it, the price of all of this stuff goes up because it's a dynamic bidding marketplace and Facebook and Google and Amazon, all of the advertising platforms, they want as much money as they can get. Mm. And frankly, they'll get it as long as it's profitable for us, right? Yeah. At the point it tips over and we can't be profitable, uh, then it's a, a bigger challenge for them to maintain that. But right now they, there's nothing but upside. So get in early and make sure that you get the, uh, you know, maximize the, the potential. So thank you again, Paul. Um, awesomers out there, just go to awesomers.com slash one six nine and you'll be able to find today's show notes and details and, uh, get on over to seller Chatbot. Uh, again, as I have already disclosed, I'm an investor in there. Uh, I love these guys, you know, regardless of that investment. And, uh, but I really see that the entrepreneur, the guys listening, the gals listening, you guys can win and seller Chatbot can win. And then that will buy me a sandwich someday when I grow up. So hopefully that works. <laughs> All right. Again, everybody, thanks. Uh, appreciate you, Paul. Thanks, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye, Bye. everybody.